WBBM Television, sharing the spirit of Chicago. From Chicago's news team, this is Channel 2, the 10 o'clock news. Good evening. A city worker opened fire at a water filtration plant on the lakefront today, and when it was over, the gunman and one of his co-workers were dead. Another person was wounded. As Susan Wallace reports, the shooting stemmed from an argument about money. As shots rang out this afternoon, there was chaos and confusion within the filtration plant. We took the front elevators up and they were wheeling the bodies out. There was blood all over and everything that I saw uh, from Jackie. The shooting began after a plant employee, 24-year-old Jackie Haney, accused a co-worker, Maurice Rogers, of stealing $500 from her. Maurice Rogers became enraged about being accused of having been involved in the theft of this, this money. He left at about 1.30 in the afternoon, came back at about 2.50 this afternoon. He was armed with a nine-shot twenty-two caliber revolver. All indications are that he's, uh, he fired all nine shots right within the premises. Wadnicki says Rogers turned the gun on himself. He was pronounced dead at the scene. 33-year-old Glenn Ford was shot several times as he tried to protect Jackie Haney. Ford was dead on arrival at Northwestern's emergency room. Haney survived. She was shot once in the left arm and was sitting up and talking immediately after the shooting. A hospital spokeswoman says at some point Jackie Haney may have to undergo some minor surgery. Her doctors are still in the process of assessing the extent of her injuries. At Northwestern Memorial, Susan Wallace, Channel 2 News. The police say Haney and Ford and the gunman Rogers were friends as well as co-workers, and investigators are at a loss right now to explain the shooting. Federal aviation officials are investigating the crash of a single-engine airplane in DuPage County that has left four people on board dead. It happened near the DuPage Airport. Authorities say the plane was coming from Bloomington and was circling to land when the control tower told the pilot to climb up. The plane was climbing, in fact, when the engine reportedly stalled, causing the aircraft to go into a tailspin. It crashed and burst into flames in a field about a quarter of a mile south of the airport. Police have not yet released the names of the victims. Nine people died when a station wagon carrying ten members of one family back home to Illinois from a funeral in Mexico crashed in Texas. Police believe the driver of the car fell asleep at the wheel and drove into the back of a parked semi-trailer truck at 50 miles an hour. Two men and three women died in that crash. One of the women was four months pregnant. Four little girls also died. A seven-year-old boy being the only survivor, and he is listed in just stable condition with a broken shoulder. In Washington, a spokesman for President Reagan says there will be no pardons for the two principal figures in the Iran arms contra aid scandal. Those two people, Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North and Vice Admiral John Poindexter, both have invoked their Fifth Amendment rights and refused to tell what they know about the Iran contra affair. President Reagan today did not mention the no pardon statement, but after he signed a proclamation for a national day of prayer, he suggested that a show of faith may see him through this crisis. Throughout our history, our leaders have always turned to prayer in times of crisis. All of us know how George Washington knelt in the snow at Valley Forge to ask for divine assistance when the fate of our nation hung in the balance. My mother gave me a great deal, but nothing she gave me was more important than that special gift, the knowledge of the happiness and solace to be gained by talking to the Lord. Meanwhile, the special Senate panel investigating the arms sales and profit diversions says that it might consider limited immunity for White House officials to help get to the bottom of the affair. Voyager tonight is headed for home and a place in the history books. This, despite a small problem, the failure this evening of one gas pump. Nevertheless, she's to land at Edwards Air Force Base come sunrise tomorrow. The record, the first around-the-world flight without refueling. In fact, she is believed to have fuel to spare. He's got enough fuel in that airplane that if he took off again without refueling, he could fly to New York and go another thousand miles. Voyager today crossed over Panama and Costa Rica, then up the coast of Mexico. Headwinds were lighter than expected, which was good news for the storm-weary crew. Their fatigue has been... Uh, uh, almost to the point of incapacitation. Every emotion has come from this crew during these last nine days. Actually, Voyager is scheduled to arrive at Edwards at 1 a.m. 
Then it will circle until sunrise to give the landing maximum media exposure. Pilots Dick Rutan and Gianna Yeager will have some bruises from buffeting during the storms, and they are said to be looking forward to a good night's sleep. Now, Beth, still ahead on our news tonight, new poll results provide some pretty good news for Harold Washington. Also ahead of vicious racial attack in New York after three black men enter a predominantly white neighborhood. And here in Chicago, we'll show you what some Bear fans endured to get a hold of these coveted playoff tickets. Chardonnay. Chablis Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc, Cabernet Sauvignon, to all those who are coming home, and those we come home to, from Ernest and Julio Gao, all the best. I'm always looking for ways to simplify my life. That's one reason I'm glad I looked at Ford Escort. First off, I had my choice of Ford's lowest financing or hundreds of dollars in cash back. Second, I was able to save over $600 more on a special option package. Third, my Ford dealer gave me a warranty unmatched by any other American car maker. And for four years, it's been the world's best-selling car. I don't know, sounded pretty simple to me. Those local Ford dealers really are quality people with quality products that are simply great. In local politics tonight, Mayor Washington is saying that despite a poll that indicates the voters prefer him to Jane Byrne, he still expects a very tough re-election fight. In a Tribune poll, that's what it was, of 1,024 voters, Washington collected a 16 percentage point lead over Jane Byrne, 54 to 38 percent. But the mayor says he is taking nothing for granted. It's going to be a rough, tough, rugged political struggle. We understand that. We don't rely on polls. We'd rather be up than down, but uh, that's not where the game is. We don't believe the poll. We don't accept it because it, uh, uh, it goes against all the other polls we've seen in the last couple of weeks. And uh, without getting into the, the method or why it may be wrong, I think as, as other figures come out in this poll through the weeks, the other candidates are going to find that it, for whatever reason, is slanted very much for Harold Washington. Joe Pecor says that a poll taken by his campaign, that's Byrne campaign, indicates that Byrne is in a dead heat with Washington. In New York tonight, four white teens are under arrest in an attack on three black men likened to a lynching. It happened over the weekend. The blacks were beaten with baseball bats and chased away when their car stalled at a predominantly white neighborhood of Queens. It ended with the death of one of the victims who was chased into the path of an oncoming car. Statements were made that niggas, you're in the wrong neighborhood, you don't belong in this neighborhood, get out of here. Uh, my own feelings about this is that it's nothing less than a lynching. To have it happen in New York City, unbelievable <coughs> that it could happen. As of now, the suspects are charged only with assault. Authorities are said to be considering an additional charge of murder in light of the death. Uh, the victim was 22 years old. He was engaged to be married. <laughs> The mayor of a town in Georgia where citizens are required to own handguns came to Chicago today to honor Donald Bennett, whom, you may recall, is the Oak Park gas station owner who fired a gun at robbers but was found not guilty of breaking an Oak Park law that prohibits the holding of handguns. In a ceremony at Bennett's gas station, Mayor J.C. Stevenson made Bennett an honorary citizen of Georgia. Kennesaw, Georgia. We are proud of private citizens such as yourself who stand up for their constitutional rights to own and bear arms in defense of their lives and property. Since his acquittal of gun charges, Bennett has received awards from the National Rifle Association and the American Federation of Police. He's also started a defense fund for other we gun advocates. We money from uh, Hawaii, all over the country. Just people that cared, that listened to the case and thought it was just bad news. Bennett says he will keep his business in Oak Park and continue his fight for the right to bear arms. 
Three-time liver transplant patient Megan LaRocco is resting tonight following minor surgery today. Just yesterday, the seven-month-old girl got her third liver transplant in less than a month after her system rejected two others. Today, doctors at Weiler Children's Hospital took her under surgery once again, this time to remove blood that had accumulated around her new liver. Megan suffers from a rare liver disease that afflicts one in every 20,000 children. Doctors say the new liver is working well at this hour, and they are optimistic that Megan will not reject this new organ. <laughs> Good luck, we can hope. Megan. Uh -huh. Coming up here on our news at 10 o'clock, John Coughlin will have the early line on weather. Weather will have a white Christmas, that's his subject. Later on, Santa and Mrs. Claus are just two of the guests at an event that's billed as the world's biggest office party. I'd give anything for another whiff of cocoa. Wow, looks great. It was nothing. When the Jewel Chef's Kitchen plans your party, we start with the best ingredients, like fine imported cheeses, choice roast beef, and natural turkey breast. Then we freshly slice, create, and arrange till they're irresistible. Your formal parties, office parties, family parties, call for the finest. Hey! So call the Jewel Chef's Kitchen and be a guest at your own party. Has the quality of education improved at South Shore High School since Channel 2 visited two years ago? There has been no change. Return to South Shore, Tuesday at 7. Say it with diamonds. Mom, I'm engaged. Say it with pearls. Oh, John, they're beautiful. Say something special and say it with love. Brilliant diamonds, radiant gems, exquisite pearls, tantalizing gold. When you have something special to say, say it with McDade. Say something special. Honey, it's perfect. Then say it with love. From McDade. It started out as a small family operation, just a couple of hard-working employees and a most unusual distribution system. Today, it's one of the largest mail-order businesses in the world. I can't imagine anything more rewarding. The terrific kids, the travel, and the milk and cookies, of course. Sure, it's a lot of work, but we've got some pretty special people counting on us. Dedicated, thoughtful, caring, jolly. Harris Bank wishes you a very happy holiday season. Everyone's still hoping for a white Christmas, looking with those big, wet Cocker Spaniel eyes to John <laughs> Coughlin. Me. What does he say? And he says you can expect almost anything on Christmas here in Chicago. Remember three years ago, we had the temperature got down to 17 below zero. Four years ago, got up to 64 degrees above zero. Right now, though, the chances of uh, white Christmas are a little on the slim side. But we'll have to kind of wait and see. Here are the current temperatures at 10 o'clock in Chicago. 34 degrees at all reporting stations. O'Hare, the lakefront, and Midway. High today was 35 after a chilly low this morning of 20 degrees when they're standing outside waiting for those bear tickets. Humidity 89%. Southwest winds at 13 miles an hour. Barometer falling just a little bit. There's sunrise and sunset for the morrow. Here's the national weather map late this evening. And you can see we have a low pressure system down here along the Gulf Coast. And you may say, well, we don't live down the Gulf Coast. What are we talking about that for? This looks like it's going to move up the Mississippi Valley. Going to give us mostly cloudy skies for the next couple of days and a pretty fair chance of some rain on Christmas Eve. And on Sunday, as a little cooler air moves in behind it, that rain could change to a little bit of light snow. But we are, at this point, not looking for any accumulation of snow. So that means uh, white Christmas, don't count on it. Temperatures around the country today. Down in Florida, again, that was the hot spot. In Miami, Florida, 82 degrees. It was 48, or 40 degrees, rather, up here in New York City for a high. 33 degrees in Duluth, Minnesota. 55 in Rapid City, South Dakota. 69 degrees in Phoenix. 73 degrees in Los Angeles. And 53, uh, 50 degrees out in San Francisco. And the satellite view of the country shows these very bright clouds all the way from Texas over to the Carolina coast and uh, into the Gulf Coast as well. That's that low-pressure system we're talking about. And as it drifts up into the northeast, we could get some precipitation out of it by about Wednesday. And here's where the precipitation is now. National radar picking up some rather heavy thunderstorms off the Texas coast and some lighter rain throughout this whole area. And out here in the northwest, another storm system bringing some rain and snow to Washington, Oregon, parts of Montana and Idaho, and even 
a little bit of Nevada. But in the rest of the country, hardly a drop of rain, hardly a flake of snow. Weather map for tomorrow shows that low pressure system moving up in our direction. We'll have mostly cloudy skies tomorrow. A little sunshine maybe in the morning, but the afternoon should be a little on the cloudy side. So it's going to be kind of a gloomy December day. But let's remember that uh, Christmas is not far off, and that'll brighten up everybody's spirits. Okay, here's the uh, forecast for tonight. Mostly cloudy, and there'll be some fog in some areas tonight. Low will be about 28 degrees. And tomorrow, mostly cloudy, mild, though. we will get up to about 42 degrees tomorrow with the light winds from the south and the southwest. And then on Wednesday, cloudy with rain beginning during the day with a high of about 38 degrees. And then Christmas Day itself, it'll get into the 30s, and there's a chance of some rain maybe mixed with a little wet snow. And on Friday, again, a chance of some rain showers. And Saturday, we begin to clear up just a little bit with high temperatures in the 30s with nighttime lows in the 20s. So at least we don't have any of that sub-zero stuff to look forward to for the next five days. Some consolation. Thank you, John. Children all across the state tonight have taken on the adult task of trying to change public policy. More than two dozen youngsters jam-packed the lobby outside of Governor Thompson's office today. They were there to give him a box filled with about a 1,000 letters written by children asking the governor to increase funding for public aid. There have been three attempts by the General Assembly in the past year to increase the amount of state aid to children, but on each occasion the governor vetoed an increase because of what he says is a shortage of money. That's the subject of Walter's perspective. That's what he always says, isn't it, that there's a shortage of money. Whatever it is that the money is for, there is never quite enough. The children or the teachers, the doctors, the nurses, or the state police, not enough money. But for the governor himself, somehow, in some way, there is always plenty of money. For the governor's mansion, for instance, there is money to burn, or so it seems anyway. All around the outside of the mansion, the governor has been spending a fortune. He's been having the mansion landscaped, as they say in mansions, done up or decked out in fancy flowers. Why, you name it and you can find it in Governor Thompson's garden. Rhododendrons and pachysandras. Viburnums and sumacs and yellow twig dogwoods just for the daffodils, more than $300, and some trees, and the roses, 20 different kinds of roses, $5,300. The children may be hungry in Chicago, but the mansion is exquisite in Springfield, more than $40,000 that the governor has paid for his flowers this year, which he imported from places as far away as Missouri and Madison, Ohio. Now that's part of the money that the governor is spending this year on his mansion. More than half a million this year just for maintenance and service in the mansion to keep the governor in the style to which he is accustomed. Whatever the shortage of money for food, there is always enough, more than enough, for style. got the hotels, the stores, the restaurants, and the nightlife. Jazz joints and blues bars. The opera, the symphony, window shopping and boutiques. This winter, spend Christmas where it's hot. Chicago. Well, what do you know? Brand new Pontiac Grand Dam. Got the injected 3 liter V6, aero skirts, composite headlamps, sports suspension, the special buckets, the big analog gauges, the whole enchilada. Yeah, you big ham. You own one hot car. I'm Marcy Sims. We want to thank you for making 1986 a most successful year. As chairman of the company, and on behalf of all of us at Sims, we want to wish you and yours a happy Hanukkah, a very merry Christmas, and lots of good health and happiness for the new year. In 1987, you'll never see the word sale at Sims. An educated consumer is our best customer. Make a 
wish. Make magic. Start now. This holiday season, RC Cola wishes you wisdom, magic, and most of all, fun. Bears playoff tickets were snapped up today faster than you could say Doug Flutie. Dedicated Bear fans braved 20-degree temperatures waiting for the tickets to go on sale. And by dawn, about 1,000 people stood in line. First was a woman who had been there since Saturday night. Why? See the playoffs, man. We're going to be here. We're true Bears fans all the way. Anyone can watch it on TV, but when you're inside, it's totally different, you know? The game's a lot better inside. And about 50 degrees difference. It took only 58 minutes to sell out 4,600 tickets for the January 3rd game. Hundreds of fans were turned away disappointed. So like the rest of us, they'll have to settle for watching the game on TV. But if you want to see a team that is at least as hot as the Chicago Bears, you can always buy tickets for the Blue Demons. That's Ooh. right. They have a few seats uh, available, too, if you want to get out there. The Blue Demons had a tough time for a while, but poured it on in the second half to beat Northwestern handily 72-54 to tonight at the Horizon. So the Demons remain undefeated at 8-0. No. Northwestern actually led 33-31 at the half. Layup for Sean Watts for the Wildcats. But DePaul regrouped in the second half and stormed back. It was 38-37 DePaul when Terrence Green went to the hoop, 40-37. to Moments later, Kevin Edwards blocked a Northwestern shot and triggered a fast break. Rodney Strickland with two of his 14. It was 42-37. Finally, Dallas Kamajis has scored 24 after a feed from Green with a slammer, 44-37, and the Blue Demons cruise home to win by 18. They were favored by 18. The final was 72-54. In other games, let's take a look. Loyola beat Cincinnati. Purdue over Toledo. Minnesota 91, Wichita State 66. Evansville beat Bradley by 9. It was Iowa easy over Ryder. And Wisconsin 72, Eastern Illinois 68. In pro football tonight, in the third quarter, Miami leads New England 20-13. to 13. If the Patriots win, they are in the playoffs, and the Bengals are out. But right now, it doesn't look that way. And today, the Falcons fired coach Dan Henney. Now for the Bears. Their first playoff game date has been announced a week from Saturday on January 3rd at 3 o'clock in the afternoon at Soldier Field. Yes, a Saturday game for the Bears. As for uh, Mike Ditka, today he revealed that he has personally fined William Perry three times for being overweight in addition to the $38,000 Perry has lost in weigh-in incentives provided in his contract. Reports say Perry weighs 350 pounds. How do you know he weighs 350? How, much How does Madden know he weighs 350? Weigh? I don't know what he weighs, I'll be honest with you. I'll know what he weighs Friday, I, uh, but he'll be down by the playoffs. He'll be down about approximately where we wanted him. Uh, it's just a mess liquid weight. It's nothing else. And he got a little lazy, but he goes to plateaus, and this plateau is one we haven't seen before. I mean, I'm not worried about how he's playing right now. I want him to be alive when he's 29 years old, and I don't know that you can go the way he's going, and he will be. And I told him that honestly. I mean, I think that there's more important things. I think it's discipline, period. He's only hurting himself, really. Because, you know, what, what, uh, what got him to popularity, uh, basically, is good to see whoever played defense was the offensive part of it. And he won't be on offense at that weight. There's no way it could possibly work. Okay, and what about Dika's man, Doug Flutie? He has won the starting job for the playoffs. Off yesterday's performance, there really is no other choice. It appears that Mike Dicka was right again on personnel. He knew it a long time ago. Right, Mr. Ditka? Well, let's say I just knew a little bit more six weeks ago than you guys knew six weeks ago. You're still worried about how tall he is and whether he wears elevator shoes. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> Okay, and tomorrow, the Sting will have a press conference in which they will officially announce that Willie Roy is no longer coach. Assistant Eric Geyer will take over, and does Geyer want the job? Should Willie resign, um, uh, would they ask me for to be the head coach? Um, I wouldn't say no, definitely not, because I think I have, that's the reason I went into coaching and being an assistant coach, and uh, I think I would say yes, would they offer it to me? Well, it didn't do anything wrong with us. Uh, whatever he said was true, it's just that we didn't execute some, some things he said. I mean, the record they show, it's really, it's really not record the way how we play. We play excellent games, we just have last minute maybe some uh, fault or so something happened and we, we lost a couple of games. Okay, and I'm going to kind of miss Willie Roy, he's done a great job for the Sting, they won some championships as you know, but 
I think he's a little bit burned out, and it's uh, really his original idea. Okay, and uh, you know we're talking about the refrigerator. See this little G.I. Joe? He is now a, a part of the G.I. Joe family. He looks a little trimmer here in this than he does right now, but uh, kids can get this if they uh, well, buy G.I. Joe. Hold it up family. there. What, what's he got in his left, uh, left hand? A that's football, a, That's right? a football, yeah. Swing on the football. <laughs> He'll be down like that by Friday. Let's go to the world's largest office party. Mr. and Mrs. Claus were there, and so was our Robin Brantley, and hundreds of celebrity bartenders were on hand with Robin to help out. All of the proceeds going to the neediest kids' fund. Alderman Ed Verdoliak, Mayor Washington, poured some tall coons. Ed Burke there, they know how to do it. The song and dance went on for six hours, and at one point they held something called the world's largest dating game, a mix and match of Chicago's most eligible couples. About $40,000 were raised last year for the kids' fund, and they're going to top it this year. Good so night. They are. Good night.